Brian, when you're when you're when you're building a guitar, how do you go about first of all working with a client and and deciding what you're going to build and how you're going to build it? Again, it's a study. This time, with the client present. Um, there are, there are people who are going to want an instrument for uh, small parlor settings, um, perhaps to record with, practice with, and they're looking for what's the best palette of tone that I can have for a traditional guitar. Um, and <laughs> the traditional guitar opens a can of worms because are we building toward a, you know, a Spanish style or, or so depending on the repertoire that this person is, is, is trying to uh, play the guitar with um, we'll design a guitar that has certain uh, balance of tone um, we'll select woods the top of the guitar is the, mm, it's not the only tonal determinant in the guitar, but it is the main one. Uh, if you think of a speaker cup cabinet, the top is the speaker, the sides and the back constitute the cabinet. The cabinet has a lot to do with supporting the sound that comes off of the top, but the top is really the voice. And then you surround that voice with support. Um, so the wood selection is going to be aimed at trying to satisfy that player's requirements. Uh, the, this instrument that I have uh, that's on display is, is really a modern guitar, in, uh, a modern classical guitar. It's a composite top. Um, the, the top is, uh, whereas one of my solid top instruments would have a thickness of spruce or cedar uh, that is then braced. This instrument from the waist down is actually a double top. Uh, double or composite are interchangeable terms here. Uh, sandwich. You know, uh, comprised of a very thin layer of the cedar on the outside um, and less than a millimeter thick. A space which is filled with, oh, I brought, oh, clever me, I brought with this. Okay. This is Nomex. See that good light right here, there's really good light. There we go. Yeah, yeah. It's a honeycomb pattern. This happens to be eighth inch cell, about eighty thousandths thick, of paper. It's phenolic resin impregnated paper. And this is uh, this type of structure is used between two thin, an inner and an outer layer. And the composite the resultant composite is roughly the same stiffness and strength as that amount of solid wood. Yes? No adhesives. No adhesives? Oh, it's got adhesives. <laughs> yeah, the, um, you have to adhere to the wood on either side of it. Uh, and then I treat that as my top. And I fan brace it or I do, I, I do whatever bracing I want to do. Um, I do have an extra little um, advantage in using this stuff in between the two layers of the top. In that, so from, here's the waist bar. From there down, this is a double top. In between the two tops, I have an opportunity to introduce a different bracing style. So I can combine, uh, anybody familiar with Kasha? the radial braces that Kasha developed. Um, I can combine, for instance, a radial bracing pattern between the inner and outer layer of the top 
and then fan brace it on the inside. If I want to get some characteristics of the radial pattern and some characteristics of a traditional fan bracing system. Um, this particular one has a, kind of a ladder braced inner, uh, inner bracing system in with the Nomex and then seven fan braces. If you look inside of this, it looks rather traditional. Um, I've just mm -hmm. been pleased with the sound that I've gotten out of a number of these that I've built, and I, I tend to like that, uh, that style. Do, do, all the cars have, do all the cars have two part tops? Two part tops? No. Oh, uh, all of these instruments would have solid tops. That's the traditional top. Um, when I say solid, they're solid in thickness, but they're joined in the middle. There's a seam down the center. Well, did that answer your question? No, you said uh, from from the waist down, you had one thing. And yes, uh, it, it's actually, uh, I've, I've actually routed out a pocket uh, within the perimeter of the lower part of the top that ends where my waist bar is. And within that pocket, I have my composite material. And uh, what happens here is because I've got so much less mass in the top, this is an instrument that's built to be loud. This, uh, the energy that's moving this top is not having to work so hard with the mass, the normal amount of mass at the top. I mean, this is, this is like a feather. There's just nothing to it. So, and the one on the bottom is cedar and more cedar? Actually, this one's spruce. Okay. I like the combination of the top. Yes. When you're building a guitar for a client, mm -hmm. and it's a custom guitar, <clears throat> or a concert level guitar, do you envision more or less what that sound will be like? Or is it trial and error? Or you hope it turns out that way? Or is it a combination of all? It's a combination, yes. The part of it is, well, when I did this same thing last time, what did I like? Uh, <coughs> what might I change? The, uh, getting a footprint on the ground by building the first one is always the act of faith. Uh, then, okay, how do I modify from there? How do I make this thing, for me, I want this thing to sound as much like a traditional guitar as possible, only turned up. And that's been the trick. That's been the challenge for all of these um, newly minted guitars that are trying to be louder, trying to really fill a concert hall instead of a little parlor, mm -hmm. um, and yet sound like a guitar, have the palette that's useful to the musician. He'd like to be able to reach for a tone and find it, um, as opposed to, you know, there are guitars that are really, really, really loud, and you wish they weren't. <laughs> And then there are guitars that sound more guitar-like. Uh, and I would say the holy grail of modern guitar construction is to find that point where it sounds just like a traditional guitar, but it's ten times louder. Mm -hmm. Or twice. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you tell what the sound is when you're building? handling the wood. You're handling the wood and handling the wood and tapping and there's a there's a tactile and audio response. Uh, when you pick up a piece of wood, even even uh, even running your even running your fingers I can't, I, I can't there's a there's a certain papery sound of running just rubbing your finger across a, a, a top that's been thinned that tells you a lot about what's going on in that top. Hmm. What are the harmonics that are being supported? Uh, I'm looking for, I'd like to get some nice high frequencies. That's going to indicate good
good treble response. I want a complex tone. I don't want just one fundamental note when I'm, when I'm tapping on that top. Um, experience uh, is, is, is what, and you have also, of course, this is a cedar top and it has a particular sound. A European spruce top would have another particular sound. Within those areas, there are overlaps where somebody might, uh, I got a great compliment on the guitar one day from a builder that I really respect up in Portland. And um, he said, wow, that guitar sounded so good in this show. What kind of spruce was that? And I thought, oh. <laughs> this is one of my heroes. I said, ah, oh, actually, that was cedar. And he, he, he really didn't like cedar. <laughs> and so this was kind of a, uh, you know, one of those great moments. When, uh, <laughs> He's, he's one of the, uh, he really is, this was Jeff Elliott, one of my great heroes of guitar builders. And for him to have liked that particular senior guitar was a big day for me. Um, yeah, let's... Uh,